Welcome back everyone. We have placed our first parameter, this bolt diameter. We've changed some of its properties and notice there's this little blue X and this little blue X is the graphic representation of that start point property that we adjusted. And of course we adjusted it to midpoint and you can kind of see that it, yes it's in the midpoint of the bolt diameter. If we had left it at start point it, the small blue X would be up here on that first item that we selected. So let's put a linear parameter dimension along the length of the bolt. So if I select that command I notice I'm going to choose the midpoint of this line that represents the surface of what the head of the bolt is going to rest on the clamped surface. Notice I'm not choosing this upper area. Um, so I guess let me just choose it to show you what's going to happen. So if I try and dimension this, it makes it really difficult to um, get a horizontal dimension parameter. So let's see, back to linear dimension, I can overcome that really easily by simply selecting the midpoints of these two lines. And I have my horizontal dimension and parameter dimension is the correct term. So again, I'm going to select this. I am going to change some properties here. I'm going to call this one length. And I also do not want to show any grips in this parameter. And here I want my base, I'm sorry, my base location to be the start point. And I'm going to see a small blue X right here at the origin. And what that means is that when the length number changes, this start point stays constant and it's the other end of this dimension parameter that's going to adjust in length. Okay, so let's continue moving on. I'll hit escape, come back and do another linear parameter. And in this particular case, I know that the head of my bolt is going to need to get thicker and thinner. I will use probably midpoints here as well, right? Just so that I get exactly what I'm looking for. And I want to adjust some properties here. Of course, I do not want to show grips. And I want my base location to be start point, And I want to rename this to head thickness. Kind of abbreviating a little bit. And I'm going to need, let's see, some dimension parameters that control the then size of the hex. So I'll use this linear dimension parameter. And I will come down here and get the overall diameter. Ah, sorry, it's not the diameter, it's the distance across the corners of a hex. So I'll select this parameter and change the titles here and I'm going to use G simply because again as I mentioned earlier G is the letter that's used inside the original bolt table that we looked at. And so of course I'm going to want my to adjust my base location from start point to midpoint and I do not want to show any grips to the end user. So as I change sizes of the bolt, then this width is going to change here. And of course, the dimension across this first um, set of corners for that hex are also going to change. So I am going to need a dimension across here. So I'm going to put that in. So back to linear dimension parameter. And I will select these two endpoints and place this over here and select it again and rename it. And I will show on screen kind of where I got some information, but amazingly enough, it turns out that the distance across here is exactly half of G. So I'm going to label this one G 
divided by 2. I want my action to be oriented around the midpoint, so base location should be equal to midpoint. And I do not want to show any grips to the end user later. And so I need to also place some additional parameters, these lookup parameters. So this is pretty interesting. This is really easy, right? So if I click lookup, I am going to be clicking somewhere, right? So I'm simply going to click here, and I get this cyan triangle, and it says look up one. And then I'm going to select an additional location down a ways, and I get something. I guess I'm out of my parameter. So back to look up table parameter, and I will select its location down here somewhere. All right, so let's take just a few seconds and talk through what we're looking at. So look up table parameters. Right? There's really nothing here. It's the action that we create, that we apply to this, that will be meaningful to us. Notice there is a yellow, what appears to be error message. And, and yes, absolutely, it's a caution tag. I wouldn't really call it an error message, but it's a caution tag. And notice it's on every single one of the parameters that we've put in. So this yellow caution tag simply means that I have created a parameter, and that parameter that I've created does not have an action associated with it yet. Right? This idea of a dynamic block is so that things can move and change, but things don't move and change by just identifying a noun, right? We have to apply a verb to them. So these caution flags are going to disappear as we start to apply actions to these parameters. Okay, so I think we're already done with this section. We have created all of the parameters that we need, and as we come back in the next section, we will begin to apply actions to these parameters. So I uh, hope this is helpful, and we'll see you in the next section.